Welcome back to part three of our interview with Casey McAllister, where he tells us how to push past what he calls the pain cave, in addition to why he starts his day at 4 a.m. Keep it right here. Part three is next. Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performance Performance Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak peak performer performer in any area area of of your life life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. Let's talk about the Spartan race. Uh, We could use that for an example is when you're out there, okay, so you're doing one of the running portions, and obviously you're getting passed up, I'm sure, a bunch on the running piece. Then you come up to something like the rope climb, and you're just smoking everybody. What's your, as you're going through the race, is, are you going through different kind of emotional uh, flows where, hey, I wish I was a little bit faster, I wish I could beat this person, or he's finding somebody that's walking and you're beating them, uh, do you have a different mentality when you're going up the rope going, nah, 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 you know, I'm kicking your butt. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we look, in, in business and in life, the people are listening, we, we all go through these ups and downs. Some things we do really well, some things we don't do so well. And we've got to keep ourselves going through the entire process. I, when I do these races, I'm not a very fast uh, runner, swimmer. Uh, I, I'm a pretty good cyclist when I do triathlons. But I'm always getting passed on the running. I, I, everybody I know it jokes, you know, Thor doesn't run. He just kind of does the, the walk, right? The swim, the bike, and the walk. <laughs> and But when I'm on the bike, I'm like, I got you, right? And then when I'm, uh, I'm doing the, the, the walk, jog, run portion, I'm getting passed. I'm just like, you know, nice to see you. I'm always joking around. I said, this is a no passing zone. It really throws people off during a race. You want to throw somebody off when somebody goes to pass, you just go, sorry, no passing zone. They're like, wait, 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 wait. It's, it's a race. Um, what what's yeah, going through yeah, your mind? I, Are you- I do go through that. You, you know, my my running portion is the the slowest. You know, well, heck, the only time I'm going slower than when I'm running is when I'm doing the bucket carry and the sandbag carry. Uh, you know, and and I don't mind it too much. But you're right, man. When I hit certain obstacles, you know, it it is kind of fun. Uh, when I do the low crawl, any you know, the barbed wire crawl. I'm sitting there barely ducking my head while these people, while everybody else is crawling on their belly, getting a face full of mud. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there ducking under these uh, these barbed wires, <laughs> quick as you please, while everybody else is struggling. You know, yeah, uh, the obstacles are the easiest part of the race for me. I love hitting the obstacles. You know, it's a challenge that I can overcome quickly and just as fast, if not faster than most people. You know, I even hit the the twister, which is a crazy, you know, contraption, you know, and I uh, bolt myself over that, you know, e- easy enough. But as soon as I, that my butt hits the dirt, I'm, I'm once again slow. And my, my fastest scoot is about half a mile, half a mile per hour or a, a mile every half hour, and that's uh, that's pretty slow by any definition. And do you fight? Are you competitive against the field? Are you competitive against yourself? What's what, what's go? Or are you just going? Hey, I'm just glad to be here. You know, it, it, I just want to finish this race. Well, I to a certain extent. It, it is that I, I'm just glad to be there. But to another extent, it is totally a a fight against myself. You know, how hard can I push it? How far can I go? And I, I I'm never. I mean, I'm out there to enjoy it for sure. But at the same time, I am pushing myself to see absolutely how far I can go, how fast I can go. Uh, every race, I'm trying. There's you know a. a one obstacle that I'm always trying to do better at. I I have yet to hit that dang spear throw. I've still not accomplished the spear throw. So I'm I'm trying to get through a whole race without burpees, but uh, that spear throw keeps getting me. Uh, and and the bucket carry, you know, takes me forever. And and now I'm looking 
for ways to improve that, you know, get a get a backpack that I can put the bucket on or something. Uh, and so every single time, it's all about uh, improvement. You know, I'm not I'm not going to beat people. I mean, maybe once or twice, some people might actually be slower than me, but it really doesn't happen. Uh, I am, especially on this beast, I was four hours slower than the slowest person. So it's not about beating people, but it is about beating myself every day. If, if I'm not improving myself, then there's really no purpose. It's like me going out and doing a marathon just for fun. You know, there wasn't much improvement that I did because I accomplished that marathon. You know, it was just a nice two hour workout. But those Spartan runs, that's where I'm, you know, I, it's still a ginormous challenge for me to complete. So it is challenging myself each and every time. Well, I got to disagree w with you on this one because you beat everybody that did not show up to race. And I bet there were a few people at minimum that never finished, started but never finished. Oh, it's true. Yeah, there's there's plenty of those people that I, I remember passing somebody who was at a nutrition state station and she was sitting there waiting for the uh you know the medical team to take her back to the start line and then you know i didn't want to judge you know maybe she had you know torn something in her yeah. knee or yeah. she you know something uh but yeah there's plenty of people that for whatever reason they just give it up you know they're they're like i'm done and i'm not going to finish this thing how do you keep going I'm sure there's massive pain at some point. The, the whole scooting just has to really just put a tremendous amount of pressure on your on your butt and, and your back. How do you push past that pain? Oh wow! This this last beast I got it was about two two three miles from the end where I entered what what a lot of runners and ultra athletes call the pain cave. I was I was hurting. Oh man! And and it wasn't necessarily bodily hurts. You know, I had had those throughout the race. You know, my back would hurt, and half a mile later, it would be gone, replaced by, you know, my wrist hurting. And and so the pains just kind of cycled throughout the race. But about two miles to go, I entered the, oh, such a horrible spot. Uh, and, it, you know, it was in my brain. I, you know, well, that, and I was probably dehydrated and, you know, definitely didn't have enough uh, energy in my body. And, uh, you know, entered that, that pain cave. Uh, and to get through that, it took, it took me, well, honestly, I ended up getting super mad at myself and that, that helped me get some, uh, that helped me get some adrenaline pumping through my body. And I started yelling at myself, getting really pumped and motivated to, uh, to finish. But yeah, by that point I didn't have, I mean, people weren't even passing me by that point. I was, I was that far behind. And, uh, the, the mental anguish and the mental game is a lot harder to deal with than, than the physical one ever is. The physical is just your body, but the mental, the mental is what causes you to stop. Now, did you come out the other side and when you got towards the end, did a lot of those pains go away? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I, well, you know, the pains, I, I don't know. I mean, I was exhausted. I, I couldn't even tell you what was hurting the worst. I mean, honestly, the next day I was sore. Of course, my butt was sore. My shoulders were sore. Uh, but my whole body wasn't sore. I was just exhausted. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> coming out of the tree line, seeing the finish line, and I still had a mile to go to the finish line, but I, I didn't suddenly get a spark of energy. I, I still had to push through. I mean, every step to the finish line was, was an effort of pure will. My body didn't have anything left in it. Uh, but yet I found a way to keep my arms moving, keep my butt slap in the ground until I was able to cross that finish line. You yeah. know, it was one step at a time. Yeah. And the reason I, I mentioned that is because so often in these type of races, you get to the point where you're just, you've got nothing left in the tank, everything hurts. And if you can just push past that, your body has a, a has the ability to start to shut down the pain. You know, we, we have endorphins that just literally just start to turn off the, the pain receptors. And sometimes you find if you can just push past that initial point that it starts to get easier. Yeah, you're still exhausted. Yes, you're still going to hurt the next day. But at some point, 
if you can just get that mental game together and push past it, uh, there's an easier side on the other side of that initial wall. Absolutely. I think uh, I think I hit that three or four times during yeah. that race. <laughs> Get, getting past, you know, little body hurts. I mean, heck, even going down the uh, the uh, rope, uh, you know, climbing up was easy enough. But coming down, I I uh, went a little too fast and burned one of my fingers pretty good. In fact, that was the uh, that was the injury that stuck around the longest. And, uh, <laughs> you know, after after maybe half an hour, I you know, I couldn't feel it anymore. It didn't matter anymore. Right. Uh, so I hit that plenty of times, but it was it was the exhaustion and the the mental uh, blocks. Uh, yeah, two miles out was when that that really sucked it down for me. You know, you talked about that you you like the work, and if more people just like the work, uh, there probably be a lot less issues. Certainly, be more profitable companies. I'm always yelling about this. It's like, look, you got to get in there. You got to grind, you know, do the work. Do you have a morning routine or some sort of routine that you constantly do that keeps you sharp? (laughs) This is always a challenge. And it's really funny when, when other people talk about getting up early and doing workouts, you know, it's like six o'clock that they're getting up. Well, if I don't get up by, by five, uh, I can't do anything before my kids are up. My kids are up at six o'clock. And, uh, but usually what I like to do in, in the ideal world, meaning I actually got more than five hours of sleep, uh, I like to get up, you know, around four and, and do a workout, whether that be, uh, you know, going running stairs at the local college or coming out to my shed and getting on my hand cycle. Uh, so four o'clock I do that, but usually by 5.15 I'm back home and uh you know reading reading my scriptures you know getting my spiritual uh uh you know muscles ready for the day and uh and by six o'clock it is it is going full bore all all my kids are usually up by six every once in a while i take my daughter out for a short little run she does a lot better too when she gets a little bit of uh uh exercise in for the day so we go for a run and then uh getting the kids ready for school and and by eight o'clock you know i hear people that you know they had to wake up at eight o'clock you know that was you know so early for them but i'm like holy cow my day's half gone i have i have done so much by the time eight o'clock rolls around uh but honestly eight o'clock is when i really start to have to buckle down kids are off at school and and i'm working yeah, I set my alarm every day for 4.59. People are like, why 4.59? I'm like, I want to beat all those lazy people that get up at 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If you had the chance to go back and talk to the 13-year-old self, yourself when you were 13, what would you tell him? When I was 13, I was already, I was in high school. I, I uh, was wrestling. I, I was pretty confident of myself. And I, I kind of had a good idea of what was going on. A lot of stuff I've talked about, you know, has been me ever since high school. But if there was one thing I could tell that kid would be, you know, I, I would help my younger self understand the hard times are going to come. You know, high school, you know, I, I had the world on a platter. I was, I was uh, going to be a state championship wrestler. You know, I was going to kill it in cross country and track. You know, I was... I was in choir drama. I was doing everything, and and I was being amazing, you know. But later on in life, you know, stuff happens. And so if I could, you know, tell him that one thing, he knew how to work. I knew how to work at thirteen, but one thing I guess I didn't know was how to work even after stuff got hard, after life threw you a couple of curveballs. You know, when when I uh, went on a mission for my church. There wasn't a lot of time to exercise, and and as a consequence, I gained I gained quite a bit of weight. And so, coming off the mission, I had to fight through being, you know, like 50 pounds overweight. And and for a guy without legs, that's a ginormous amount of weight being overweight. And so, I had to fight through that. And so, fighting through those times of more emotional blocks and mental blocks than anything else that's what i would tell that younger casey that there would come those times and and not 
that me telling him that would make it easier, but to help him understand that it was the grit, you know, the daily relentless uh, working at it that would make the difference. It's not the one-time big match that makes you amazing. It is the grit. It is the wearing away at the, those ginormous problems day after day, year after year, that truly change who you are and what you do. You have 90 seconds to tell your kids any advice that you want to. What would you tell them? Love to learn. And before I said love to work, and then that's part of it, but as you love to learn, you will find new challenges. When my mom taught us sewing, I love to learn how to sew. I love to learn how to cook. As you love to learn and work along with that, your life, there's be so many things that'll open up. I have recited my house. I've recited my floor because, or re, re laid my floor because I love to learn. And I love to work. And those two combined together will take you absolutely anywhere. Many times clients hire me as a wake-up call. I don't pull any punches. I call it as I see it. I tell them exactly what I'm thinking, what I see, what my observations are. If you had a message to the audience for all those that are, are able-bodied, have the ability to do anything that they want to physically, but they're not. What would you tell them? Stop wasting time, especially in this day and age. I mean, heck, maybe 20 years ago, my message would be different and it would be more of a uh, get off the couch kind of thing. But we're, we are so often as a society on our phones, on our computers, at our TVs, wasting time. And, and it's not that we can't sit down and have fun, but how are you having that fun? Are you spending time with your family? Are you uh, having fun by learning how to play an instrument? Well, unfortunately, a lot of the time, our relaxation goes on for hours, and all we're doing is staring at our phones, you know, on Facebook, on Angry Birds, on whatever the latest thing we have to try to occupy our brains. Now, I, I'm not perfect in that either, you know, but I'm learning how to not waste a single second because time is the most valuable thing we have. And the more we waste it, the more we squander it, you know, the less we'll have. It is the most quickly depleting resource on this entire planet is time. We'll never get it back. It's not a renewable resource. It is gone. And so if there's one thing that anybody, I don't care if you're able-bodied or not, you know, it's time. Spend time with your family. Spend time improving yourself. Spend time pushing your body and your mind beyond anything you thought you could do. And then you'll truly be making the most out of the time you have. Love it. You're much nicer than I am sometimes with that. With <laughs> <laughs> and I and I do it with love. I really, I mean, it comes from a great place, but it's like, ah, oh, you know, I just, I, I tell my clients sometimes, I said, sometimes I'm going to want it more than you, and I'm going to drag your butt across the finish line. I will not let you fail here. Doing that with a client right now. He's just too busy for something. I said, give it to me. I'm taking care of it. We're getting this done. Get out of my way. <laughs> so anyway, I just I I I, uh, I just I I think you just described being a parent. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm a parent as well. <laughs> Yesterday, mom was sleeping, and uh, and I I kicked their butts in the gear, and we we cleaned the house so that mom could uh, wake up from a nap with a clean house. I uh, I love it. So <laughs> tell us how the audience can get a hold of you and uh, some of the speaking things that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So as I've been uh, learning how to do absolutely everything by myself, uh, my my website is up and running. I I try to fix problems as I find them. Uh, it is riseupwithkc.com. And I've kind of taken that Rise Up With Casey, and that's, that's absolutely everywhere. That's my YouTube channel. Uh, Instagram, trying to post a lot of great Instagram stuff to give people a little bit of boost to their day, a little bit of motivation. Uh, Twitter still haven't figured that one out quite yet, but, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good on Instagram, Facebook, rise up with Casey on Facebook, uh, rise up with Casey, uh, YouTube and a website. And, uh, the best way to send me an email is through my website. 
Rise Up with Casey. Terrific. Casey, thank you very much. I look forward to sharing that stage with you one day as, uh, as, as the backup singer. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> until that day, uh, best of luck with everything. You are on a rocket ship here, and uh, I look forward to meeting you in person one day. Hey, be careful what you say. I might have you be a backup singer. <laughs> hey, I'll do it, man. Man, I'm telling you, if you're speaking somewhere, I'll come up and back. Now, I can't sing very well, but... <laughs> well, well, that's what I was saying. My my singing performance with your backup, we might, uh, <laughs> we might scare half the audience away. So, <laughs> but no, I've been uh, glad to be here, and uh, thanks for having me on. The very best. Thanks, Casey. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening today. I really do appreciate your time. And I hope you found today's show valuable. If you would like to receive these shows automatically to your phone or to your computer, simply go to iTunes and subscribe. After listening to several of the shows, if you're so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating as this helps us reach additional people and spread the message. If you're truly committed to taking your life to the next level and doing whatever it takes to become a peak performer, but something's holding you back, something is blocking your way, and you just can't seem to figure out what it is, Send me an email to info at thorconklin.com and I'd be more than happy to get on the phone with you. We'll schedule a 15-minute discovery call. No obligation, no cost. I absolutely love to hear from the listeners and if there's something I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, if you found something of great interest in today's show and you want to share that with your friends and family, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin, click on the episode, hit the share button, and share it on your page. You can follow me at Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is ThorConklin.com. We're constantly adding new free resources, discussing additional tricks, tips, tools, and strategies on how to be a peak performer. Remember, I try to keep these episodes short so you can listen to them during dot time, doing other things, commuting, driving, walking, working out. Decide to be a peak performer in all that you do. And until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day.